How? <laughs> okay, go. Hey guys, it's Taylor, and you're listening to Tea Time with Tay, a podcast series where I sit down, like I have a choice, brew some tea, and then spill it. Now, guys, 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 it's been a minute. If you have been following my podcast, you would know that my last podcast was, I think, almost a year ago, and I said I was going on a short hiatus. But that hiatus kind of turned into a year-long thing, and I'm sorry about it, but I am back. I'm calling this season two, and if you are watching this on YouTube, thank you so much, and welcome to my channel. Well, don't forget to subscribe and like. If you are listening to this on iTunes, I appreciate you for finding your way here and liking it and subscribing. But today on my podcast, I have a very special guest. She is one of my closest, oldest friends. I love you so much. And I have Madison Chita. Hello. <laughs> you can imagine that there's like a whole audience here and that are just cheering you on. But it's just me and Ari, so. Anyways. Well, that's good too. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being here. For those of you guys who don't know, Madison is an actress and she is going to be a new mom. So I was really excited to be here with you today to just talk to you about, you know, where life has taken you and just have a nice conversation. But before we get into it, we are drinking tea. Duh. And so what are you having? Duh. I'm having a, it's a chai. Did you look up the name? I forget it. She forgot the name. Mom. Um, it was... Um, I don't remember the no, name. No, forget it. You screwed up. You screwed up already. You fucked up. I, I told you one thing. I'm very desperate. I was like, don't forget I the name of the tea. It had the name Masala in it, but... You know what? Actually, that's a good thing that she forgot because this is a sample tea that will be a part of my tea line which will be coming out later this year, which you will hear me talk about a bajillion times over the course of the podcast. So would you get to pick the name of it? Eventually? I'm going to get so we'll be okay. naming all of them. Name it, I don't know, Chai. I don't know, Chai. <laughs> I don't know, Chai. Like, Chai. Like, no. Chai. Not funny? Not a thing? Okay, no. cool. Well, I am drinking <laughs> lemon. <laughs> I'm drinking lemon cayenne from David's Tea. I continue to supply them with enough money to rule a small country, but this tea is really good. It's good for cleansing, so if anyone's interested, yeah, I would that, highly recommend it. That it smells amazing. It smells really good. For those of you watching this on YouTube, you can see this long ass green straw I have. I'm sorry if it's distracting. And it's full of lipstick. It is. Well, I mean, <laughs> is there ever a day that you I can't go like more than a day and a half without wearing lip lipstick? It's kind of a way of life. Sometimes she claims it's a lip balm. It's not. <laughs> I have done that before. And where to pen. I don't know, I just like feel, I feel like it's... You've worn it to bed? I feel like... For what reason would you wear that to bed? I feel like when I wear lipstick to bed, it just makes me feel... You know when Coco Chanel... Don't you get lipstick all over your sheets? Not so, sleep alone. <laughs> Very simple. Um, but I, I, you know when Coco Chanel says, she's like, when they ask her, what do you wear to bed? And she says, Chanel number five. <laughs> I feel like one day someone's no, going to ask me and they're going to be like, what do you wear to bed? And they're going to be like, Stella from Fenty. <laughs> I'm gonna do like a little giggle. I feel like this podcast, I'm just gonna be like jimming at the camera the entire time. Okay, well, I mean, do we look at the camera? I don't know. It's kind of a thing. We're trying this out for people listening, um, just listening. We're trying it out, seeing if there's audio and visual component is kind of a thing. We need to find a better setup, but we're giving it a try. We're trying new things. It's 2018, new year, new day. New year, very new Madison. So let's get right. This is about you. So let's get into you. How's it going? It's going pretty well. Right now, Madison is a solid how many weeks pregnant? Congratulations, by the way. Thank you. Um, I am nearly 30 weeks pregnant. Which was that like the hex? I've been out of school for a while, like seven months. Uh, I'm getting towards seven months. That was crazy. Well, uh, so seven, about seven months ago is when, obviously, I found out that my girl, Madison, was pregnant. I've known you since I was five, and she's, like, one of my closest friends who I know is having a baby. The closest person probably to me who has had a baby, I guess, is my cousin, Sabrina. Um, so when I remember she came over, we had these wine nights with all of our girls, and Madison came over, and she just was acting really weird. Before she even got to the house, she, like, messaged all of us to be like, hey, guys, like... 
I'm doing, she's an actress, and so she's like, I'm doing like a little bit of like a, a month of no drinking because I just really want to get my body back to normal and like in shape and things. And coincidentally at that time, I was really sick. So I'm like, you know what, I'm not going to join you. And I'm not going to drink tonight. But after a while, after the night started going, I just no one believed. No one believed. <laughs> no one believed her. And I, and I was like, I'm feeling well enough to have a drink. So I went for it. But later on that night, you were acting really weird, kept saying you wanted to go home, and something was, something was wrong, but you didn't want to talk, it was not wrong, you didn't, how did you say it? I just had to, I, you just had to really go, you just were like, I have to go. I just had to go, or like, somewhat earlier than everyone else, and I think certain people thought. You were just being really anxious. At first, I'm going to admit, when you I'm not good at hiding things. No, you're not. When you were like, I, I just need to meet up with Chris, I need to meet up with Chris, I kept thinking like, are they going through something? Like, are yeah, they breaking up? Yeah, we were breaking up. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> that would be so bad. But then she just kind of came out and said it, and she's like, yeah, I'm pregnant. Well, I was, that was when that I was really taking a couple tests, and I was like, I took more after that to double check. But. Pretty yeah. certain. <laughs> That's when. What was that, that like for you when you first found out? Um. It was a shock. It was not something I was planning on doing. Um, but I had prepared myself pretty well before. Chris and I had talked about it, and I was like, I was like, let's prepare ourselves because I feel like I feel like I'm pregnant. Mm -hmm. So uh, we talked about it, and then, but still, when it was positive, it was quite a shock. That so, plus sign just pops up, and you're like, yeah. oh. I definitely so had, uh, I don't know, I don't want to make it sound negative because I, I do, it is a huge positive, but it, you know, I, I cried and I was mm -hmm. shocked and I was like, what do we do? And I'm freaking out. Um, but then, but I think that's a pretty normal reaction. Yeah. Right? It was, it was something that we had planned to do, but we had planned to do it in later. Yeah, in mm -hmm. about two years. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't want to say it was unplanned. It was, it, it was unplanned, but it was, it was planned but early. Planned but early. I remember when the girls and I found out, we were like really, really shocked. But I think almost instantly. I mean, I guess it's not us, but we were so excited because it's like I feel. I keep saying it, but I feel like this is like a communal baby. Like, it's your child, but it's, like, our child. Yeah. That's... Like, Chris needs to understand this. <laughs> like, we're all in this together. Well, yeah, it's the first school school It's school. the first grandchild on both sides, and I think, I, uh... I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, so, I feel like it's going to be everyone's baby, <laughs> which is good, because I feel like that'll hopefully mean a lot of help. Yeah. Um, well, you know I can't, like, physically help, but, I mean, I'm down to... I'm down for the emotional. You can buy your things. I know. I, can buy, <laughs> I, I already have. I already have a list of things that I'm so excited about. That's helpful. Yeah, but um, yeah, and you already have a name, but I don't know if you're gonna say. But we're gonna hold back. They're gonna hold back on the name. Yeah. I really suggested and have been trying, guys, for a really long time, and suggesting even before we knew the sex of the baby that a great unisex name for the child would be Taylor. I've been campaigning for it. This for is a long, ongoing joke that will... it's not a joke. It's not a joke to me. I think it's a beautiful name. I think it would suit your child. And you are setting yourself up for colossal disappointment because the child will not be named Taylor. I still have two months, so <laughs> we'll, work we'll work on it. But beyond baby, obviously another big part of you is the fact that you are such a talented actress. I'm not just saying this because she's my friend. I mean, I would say it if she was just my friend. But it's actually true. So starting with where most people know you from, Heartland, can you talk a bit about your character and yeah, a little bit about the season that's going on currently? Yeah, so uh, Heartland is a it's a show on CBC um, and it takes place in Alberta. Um, my character came on in season seven. We're currently uh, airing season eleven, which is finished shooting. Mm -hmm. um, my character is named Jade, and she is a rodeo gal. Uh, she's a bronc rider, and this season was kind of different. What's a bronc rider? Well, so it's the the event bronc riding is the event where you. Uh, so do you know what a bucking bronc is? Those are the horses that do the kicking, right? Yeah, so it's kind of like you you know what bull riding is. 
Yes. It's kind of like that, except it's with, uh, it's with a horse. Yeah, it's not with a bull. So it's slightly safer, but still that looks terrifying. seemed extremely dangerous to me. Um, I didn't even realize until, like, like I and this is going to make me sound super, super city, like a city person. I didn't realize how big horses were until two years ago when I was downtown at some kind of parade and a police horse pulled up. And I was like... Okay, like that's not normal. Like this, like I don't know if police horses are bigger, or even if I think they are. Even if a horse is like slightly smaller than that, horses are massive. I've never, I've only been like beside those miniature ponies. There's a lot of different sizes of horses. We had some miniature horses on the show. And those are adorable. super cute, but they're they're a little nasty. <laughs> I think they're not really nice horses. Horses are gen- like all the horses that I've met have been really gentle and nice. And some of the little miniature horses, they got like. Attitude? Yeah, they have attitudes. <laughs> Me. <laughs> so, maybe they that's my feeling. They like they look super chubby because their legs are so short. Yeah. So you don't ride miniature horses from prom, but like yeah. those are like for. Children. So how do they get them to like have an attitude? Do they like sting them or something? Um, embarrassingly enough, I don't know. No, there's they don't. They can like they'll put them in the chute, and I guess just the you know you'll have a specific type of horse which is meant to to. To be doing the sport, so they they know what they're doing, and I don't really know how it is that they that they do that, but they, they train them to, to be able to do that. Yeah, and to so that's know what, what to do. So that's what your character does. Yes, and this season we've got to do a couple different uh, events. Uh, so I did team roping. Like I didn't personally do it. Oh, they are, I was gonna say, how much of this are you actually doing? So no, they have stunt doubles. Minimal amounts. There was we we have. But you had a ride. Stunt doubles for everything. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. But you have a stunt double. Does they like? Do they legitimately look like you? Um, some of them look more like me than others. Wait, how many do you have? Some girl? of them are men. Um, well, it depends. On, <laughs> so they'll get specific. Uh, there's one girl who does most of my stuff because she does. Uh, she does all my bronc riding stuff. But we had to do um, a team roping event this year. Um, that's uh, and they had me and this other girl doing. So th- it's in the event. Um, boys will. Do, it was a uh, calf wrestling, steer wrestling, steer wrestling. So it was like where you ride on the horse and then you chase the the steer, which is a baby bull, and then. In the sport, the guys will actually wrestle, like they'll jump onto the low cow and wrestle it to the ground. And girls in the sport, when they do the sport, is they grab a ribbon off of it instead. But they had us girls doing the boy way. She's pretty badass, to be honest. Um, especially like for that show. She definitely, she definitely I watched. I definitely watched a few episodes, and she seems like she's like the resident like badass. Which is very befitting for you. Yeah, and it's also interesting because she's this character, like, she came from Toronto and I live in Toronto. And, you know, when I started on Heartland, I didn't know anything about the the Western world or, like, the cowboy mm. thing. <laughs> I didn't, you know, very minimal knowledge of that. And I guess that was the same with her. But now she's, like, completely immersed in that world. And it's been very interesting to learn about. And how has that transition been going from playing, you know, kind of like a little bit of a badass character on a wholesome show to the transition of being a part of a horror (laughs) Netflix series? Like, guys, okay, when I tell you I stand for my friends, like, I get so excited when she tells me things she's doing. So when my girl told me that she was going to be a part of a Netflix series, I was like, "Ah." (laughs) I'm like, the bragging rights that I get now at the French are amazing. But what's the full name of the show? I would just call it Slasher, but I know there's like more. So, yeah, it's it's called Slasher Series, and so our season was called Guilty Party. Which is season two. Which is season two. I yeah. definitely watched, like, half of season one. Everybody screwed us up. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching She told me one. that I'm doing Slasher, and I was like, Awesome. I find it on Netflix, start watching it, and I'm like, wait, Money Girl, like, what episode? I, like, I would watch the whole I thing. I feel like I specifically told everyone in season two. No, she's like, just, she's like, she's like, I'm the selective first, hearing. She goes, I'm in the first episode, and I'm like, okay, I watched the entire, the second season. I watched the entire first episode of the first season, which would make sense when someone explains something to you. She's not in it, and I'm like, I went back to rewatch it, and I'm like, I must have missed it. I must have missed it. Like, I was like, oh, maybe she's in the background. 
and then finally it made sense when I figured, you know, figured it out. But um, you are incredible in it, and she was actually in every episode because um, the show definitely kills off a lot of people. I'm not going to ruin it because everyone should go on Netflix and find it. But be warned, it is extremely graphic It's and extremely... I was terrified. Like, Apparently I, I didn't warn people enough. No, you did it. You did it. You told me it was a horror series, but I'm like, okay, cool. And I think it came out around Halloween. Yeah, it came out in October. Yeah, so it's already a scary time of year. It's, like, dark. I don't do scary at all, especially alone. But, of course, I was so interested to watch it. I think the fact that you were in it made it a little bit easier for me to watch. But when I say a little bit, it was, like, very minimal. Like, I definitely remember, like, talking to, like, a close friend of mine and being like, I am terribly <laughs> watching this. And I'm just, like, I was, like, so scared. I would never know who's going to die next. Um, really graphic, but can you tell a little bit about the plot of the show? Yeah, so people in? let's see. Hmm. The show, uh, so there's a group of uh, five young people who were counselors at a camp, and they committed a crime. And then five years later, they want to go back um, to cover up some potential evidence um, and the camp that they used to work at had been turned into a commune for a group of just there's a group of kind of kind of hippie, hippie people yeah. who kinda, it almost looked like a retreat but not like not a luxurious one like when you just go to like get in touch with the land yeah it's like definitely not like my style but kind of definitely like, more yours well I don't know I don't know about that it's like kind of a group of misfit people who come from all different walks of life who are trying to you find out throughout the why series they're why they're there yeah. um and so the the five come back and then they get kind of stuck there due to weather and other things and um and people start getting plucked off yeah it's our bad. <laughs> and then you don't know who did who, who's doing it so mm -hmm. the whole series is kind of trying to figure out who and it definitely was like one of those things where you were surprised up until the very end who was the one i could not see it there's a twist ending yeah. definitely a really good twist ending it's not one of those shows where you're like from the jump oh best person did it like i could not see it yeah, remember. that was the part that I was like, I was worried that it wasn't gonna, that people would be able to figure it out really easily, and I don't mm -hmm. know, maybe some people have. Um, I saw another movie where the, it was the same plot twist a couple months before I actually got the show, and I picked it out right up the top of the show. But I knew exactly what was gonna happen, because it was very obvious the way that they had shot it, but I think that we, I think we did a pretty good job. At, no, at yeah. Keeping it. No, it was definitely a ride to the end, and other people have said that to me too. Um, but, like, what was that, like, filming for you? Because I know that you guys, it's it's shot in the middle, like, I don't know where they're supposed to, they say in the show it's shot, but it's in the middle of, like, snow. It was, like, freezing. Where did you shoot Yeah, it? we shot it in Orangeville, and um, it was actually on this old Boy Scouts camp area that I think the government owns, and I don't know how they got the rights mm -hmm. to film there or whatever, but it was an old campground. And how long was the shooting process for it? Um, it was, I think it was about three months. Uh, I wasn't in the entire time. I didn't, there was, um, it was, there was a winter shoot and then there was a spring shoot, which was not exactly warm, but it was supposed to be warm. And all the winter stuff, it was, the, the worst part for us was that uh, it was, the, the whole plot is that it's like, it's winter and it's snowy and you can't get out of here. But um, we had like two days or three days of awesome snow, and then it all melted, and we had to use fake snow the entire time. That would actually be really great for me. Like, I keep thinking, like, if I had to do that, I would die. Like, the hell alone. Do you know how expensive fake snow is? Very. Very expensive. <laughs> when you need a lot of it? But yeah. actually, yeah, for... Yeah, for that kind of show, because, like, the landscapes are huge. Especially when you're prepared for it to be free. Oh, I didn't do that into a year. Well, see, when you haven't seen some magic, <laughs> what happens on these Netflix shows? What has the response been from people? Like, because I'm sure you have, like, a whole new audience now, like, kind of, like, interacting with you. Yeah, a little bit. I mean, I think it, definitely the people who reach out to me, like, skews more positive. Because, mm -hmm. Have you know. had any, like, ever, like, negative feedback from people? 
Do people ever mean to you? It trolls at the end of Twitter. Kind of here and there, a couple snarky things. Not not anything mean or threatening or anything. I get I get some inappropriate messages, but that's yeah, it's not me- mean. <laughs> it's just weird. Um, no, I think you're really beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like photos. Oh, I mean, you can <laughs> picture whatever. We get a picture of that is, yeah. But no, I think most people, I mean, especially people uh, who watch Heartland, it's for the most part extremely positive and uh, really nice. The fans from that show are really, they're nice, they're abundant, they're, they know a lot about the show and mm-hmm. there's, you know, a lot of people to interact with and I, I see familiar names or handles or whatever. Yeah, there's been a, there's definitely been um, a little shift in in the type of uh, fans and stuff with slasher because mm-hmm. it's a completely different genre. You know, yeah, it's a completely different genre. Yeah, I don't know how much overlap there is in in the the audience for Heartland and the audience for slasher, but um, do you see yourself doing a lot more like dark worlds like that? Dark worlds. Um, I. I hope so. I, I certainly like that. Mm-hmm. And that's a, the acting's definitely something you're going to go back to post maybe. Oh yeah, for sure. I think that's exciting. I know that's yeah. a question people have had. Just like make sure like, will we see you again or are you just going to be a mom? But you know, moms these days, they do everything. Yeah, I know a lot of people who uh, who work and, and have their babies and sets are actually a pretty decent place to um, like a decent work environment to work around having babies and uh, a lot of them are baby friendly I mean like s- certain like slasher for example was a lot of night shoots so that wouldn't have been great for babies but Heartland a lot of fake blood yeah Heartland like there's babies on set all the time and there's babies in the show there's people who have babies <laughs> you bring them and that's awesome that's awesome well for the people who do know you quite well if they, if you were to tell them something that they didn't know, like a little real Madison fact, because I know that you play a lot of characters, but something about Madison that people may not know. I don't know. I'm a lot more boring than you appear. <laughs> I think you and I talk about that a lot. It's like sometimes, because I guess, I mean, I don't necessarily have like a job. You have a job. I do have a job. I do. I do. I have my hand in several things, but they're not yeah. like. Traditional, like, you know, you it's go to... It's 2018, like, people that's have true. alternative jobs now. That's true. Like, it's not, like, the traditional, though, like, I get up every morning, go to, like, an office space, not a five kind of thing. But I, you know, do do stuff. But I feel like you and I have talked about it a few times where, like, we are so boring. Like, well, we can, like, find, <laughs> like, we have these lulls where we're like, we're like, oh, you, we'll, we'll have moments when we're really busy and, like, we'll be doing things for a little while. And then other moments when you're just sitting at home on, like, a Monday and you're just like... I mean, at least you have pets. Like I, I have personally, I don't team. find myself boring. I think I'm extremely interesting. Oh, to myself, just me. No, but I mean, I think right. like a lot of people would see my lifestyle and be like, "Oh, that's boring." Like, I'm like an old lady at heart. I, that's, I mean, we call ourselves the abuelas for like, <laughs> what do we call ourselves that? Oh, I guess that's me, not. But like, I always call myself an abuela, which means a grandma in Spanish. Like, I am just. I'm a really fun person, <laughs> low key, but like high key, like not at all. But we get our wine on. I don't know. I haven't, oh. I haven't drank it in seven months, so I'm feeling extra grandma. Oh, we're gonna have a nice glass of rosé or like no, you like your reds. I like my reds. You yeah. like your reds. Yeah. Well, Madison, thank you so much for being on the first episode of my new season of Tea Time with Taya on iTunes and uh, and I guess now YouTube, you can also catch it here too. If people want to hear more about you or find you on social media, how can they find you? Um, I have an Instagram and I have a Twitter. That's pretty much all I have. Spell it out. Uh, Madison, M-A-D-I-S-O-N dot Chiatow, C-H-E-E-A-T-O-W. That's That's been pretty years to figure out how to spell it. Yeah, well, I just got Stashenko now. Um, <laughs> yeah. Shout out um, to Shout out to Veronica, too. We love you. Yeah, that was, uh, that's my Instagram. And my Twitter is just Madison Chiatow. Okay. 
And if people want to follow me, um, you can obviously, if you're watching this on YouTube, you are already here. My channel is called Taste Tips. Um, you can also just type my full name, Taylor Lindsay Noel, into YouTube and be able to find this. And you can also find me on Instagram and Twitter at Taylor LN. My website is currently under um, construction. <laughs> I'm switching the I'm switching the domain from TaylorLNWrites.com to TaylorLN.com to just keep everything a little bit more um, cohesive. But thank you guys so much again. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to my, um, what am I saying? Don't forget to subscribe to my iTunes, um, my podcast on iTunes. It helps to help with ranking. And if you are someone listening from Madison's podcast, maybe leave a little like message for Madison in the comment section on iTunes. I would really appreciate it. And I'm sure Madison would love to see that too. And until next time. Keep drinking. I don't really have an outro. Keep drinking. Keep tea. drinking tea. Have a good day. I don't know. Well, bye. Bye. Thanks for having me.